Hi everyone, in this video clip, I'll be introducing to you a new chapter that is on vectors and under this video clip, it will be under the introduction to vectors. Now, in secondary school, you have already done somewhat a little bit of introduction to vectors. In this video clip, I'll be actually revisiting some of these uh, concepts that you have learned in secondary school together with a little bit of extension of what you have learned. Now, we all know that in vectors, okay, it's actually a quantity which has magnitude as well as direction. So if you want to draw a vector, it will be from a particular point, say P, to another point Q, and the vector is directed, say, from P to Q, and that is given by this vector A. So this vector A denotes a vector, and when we write our vector, we write either in PQ, with an arrow sign above, or we write as this vector A, with a curly sign below, tilde, okay? And to find the magnitude of the vector, of course, you need to know the component, what is P and what is Q. So let's take for example, if the vector A is given by, say, A1, A2, and A3. Now recall that in secondary school, you have actually learned of vectors in this form, like A being 3i plus 2j where 3i represents 3 units in the x-axis and 2j represents 2 units along the y-axis. But in JC, what you'll be learning is an additional component which we call it the k component. The k component is allowing you to represent a point in space, basically. So for example, we can write our a as 3i plus 2j plus 5k. That means 3 units along the x-axis, followed by 2 units parallel to the y-axis, followed by 5 units parallel to the z-axis. Z-axis is something like an axis that is perpendicular to the x-y plane. For example, like this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, this will be the z-axis in this manner. Okay? So if A is represented by A1, A2, A3, okay, that means that the magnitude of A, okay, of this vector A, or sometimes we call it the modulus of A, and sometimes we call it the length of the vector A. They all mean the same thing. Okay. To find the magnitude or the modulus or the length of the vector is given by the positive square root of A1 square plus A2 square plus A3 square. Okay. And now we go on to the next concept that is this thing called equal vectors. When we say two vectors are equal, it means that A and B, for example, are equal vectors. Okay. And suppose A is actually the A1, A2, A3, and B is actually B1, B2, and B3. When we say the two vectors are equal, it means that A1 equals B1, A2 equals B2, and A3 equals B3. Okay? Every component are equal. Okay? And then, in my handouts, right, the next section is this thing called negative vectors. Now, negative vectors are just in the opposite direction as the original vector. So, for example, if A is here, the negative of A will be in the opposite direction, like this. Okay? So, if you have vector A, to be a1, a2, a3, then negative of a means negative a1, negative a2, and negative a3. Okay. Now turn to the next page of your handout. We talk about this concept which is pretty important in vectors. That is called unit vectors. Now what are unit vectors? Unit vectors are following the direction of the vector but the length of the vector is only one unit. In other words, if I have a vector A, like this, and then suppose I know that the length of this vector, modulus A, is called the length of the vector A, is say 3 units in length. Then, what is meant by unit vector? A unit vector is a vector like this, in the same direction as A, but 
the length is one unit. Uh, the length is one unit. Okay, the length is one unit. So that means that if you use the vector divided by the length of the vector, you get the unit vector. Okay, let's take for example. If the vector A is say 3, 2, 4, then we can actually calculate the length of the vector. 3 square plus 2 square plus 4 square. Okay. Then to get a unit vector A hat is basically the vector 3, 2, 4 divided by the length of it. Your length of it. And so So we have it as, you calculate this length, it will be 1 over square root 29 of 3 to 4. Of course, you can rationalize it to get square root 29 over 29 of 3 to 4. So this will be the unit vector. This vector is in the same direction as the vector A, except that the length of this vector is 1 unit. Okay? Move on from here, let me just erase the board. Now, in the next situation, we are looking at this concept called zero vector. Okay, and what are zero vectors? Zero vectors are denoted by this zero with a tilde below. Okay. And that is given by 0, 0, 0. Okay, that means it's actually the origin, right? It's actually the origin. And we have actually learned in secondary school this thing called vector addition. And vector subtraction. Okay. So for example, if you have the vector A that is say 1 to 1 or i plus 2j plus k. And we are interested to add these two vectors together. 3i minus j plus 2k. Okay. To add these two vectors together, we have A plus B. That gives me 1 plus 3, that is 4. 2 minus 1, that is 1. And finally, 1 plus 2, that is 3. Okay, so that means you are adding the component of i together, the j together, and the k together. Okay, now likewise, if you want to do subtraction, it will simply be 1 minus 3, 2 minus minus 1, and 1 minus 2. And you get minus 2, 3, and minus 1. Mm -hmm. But diagrammatically, if you want to add the vectors together or subtract the vectors together, we use this thing called triangle law of addition or parallelogram law of addition. In the triangle law of addition, if you want to draw, draw on a diagram, this vector A and say this vector B, and you want to add these two vectors together on the diagram, what you can do is first move this B parallel to its original position, original direction, and the same length as the original vector. Here is B. So A plus B, using a triangle law of vector addition, will be this component here, A plus B. Okay. Then how about using this thing called parallelogram law of vector addition? For parallelogram law of vector addition, it's similar to triangle law, the difference is that, of course, this A, this is B. You make them join together from an initial point, then you form a parallelogram. Okay? And the diagonal of this parallelogram will be simply be A plus B. Okay? This is parallelogram law of vector addition. In subtraction, the process is similar in the sense that if you want to subtract one vector from the other vector in a diagram, we will do it in the following way. For example, this is vector A. 
This is vector b. We first reverse the direction of b, for example, to come to here. Okay, and then you add the minus b to a. So it's a plus minus b will give you this one. Example. Okay, All right. And the next thing is this thing called polygon law of vector addition. Polygon law of vector addition is meant for adding more than two vectors together. So for example, you have the vector A plus B plus C plus D. Okay? And you want to add these four vectors together and that joining from the initial point of A to the final point of D will be A plus B plus C plus D. That is okay. Now let's move on to the next part of it, which is on this thing called scalar multiplication of vector, which will be the last section for this video clip. Now, in this scalar multiplication, of vector basically means you multiply a vector by a constant. For example, like the vector a is 3, 2, 1. You multiply the vector a by 2a, that will give me 6, 4, 2. So basically, it means multiplying every component of the vector by the same constant. Right? And if you multiply by minus 3, it becomes minus 9, minus 6, minus 3. So the effect of multiplying a vector by a number actually has the effect of okay, either making the same direction as A or making the opposite direction as A. The magnitude will usually will change by that number. So that means if you have this vector A is in this direction, 2A will be having a twice the length of A and in the same direction as A. And minus 3A will be in the opposite direction as A and the length of this vector is three times the original length of A. Okay? So, uh, there are some properties that I've indicated on your handouts and do take a look at how we actually use them. Okay? Okay? Uh, it says that if A is a vector, that is the first property. Of course, if you multiply A by a constant lambda, it will also be a vector. Okay. Now that is quite clear because I've just gone through with you the fact that you multiply A by a constant, you have the effect of either it is going to get a vector that is in the same direction as A, but the magnitude is in uh, lambda times in this case of the magnitude of A or in opposite direction, right? Okay, when lambda is negative. Then the other property it says that if you have lambda times mu of a, that gives me lambda mu of a. So it has the effect of multiplication. Like for example, 3 times 2a is actually the same as 6a. That is the second property. Okay. The third property basically says the following. Lambda plus mu of a you can open up to get lambda a plus mu a. Right? So again, it's something like algebraic kind of multiplication. And if you have in the fourth case, if it's lambda of a plus b, okay, right? Then it's similar again. This is lambda a plus lambda b. Okay. So this ends off this particular video clip which I've actually introduced to you uh, in terms of vectors. Okay, thank you.